Hello, gentlemen. So Manifesto Core is our network of online men's groups or masterminds where the members there are meeting every week and really focusing on holding each other accountable to be moving towards the goals that they're setting for themselves. Every single week, then all the leaders of the different core teams meet. And this week we had one of our members, Richard Batty, come in and talk to us about how he saw the meeting and the differences between therapy and the work that we're doing here in Manifesto. And we thought it was a really interesting talk, so we wanted to publish it here so that people could get a little bit of a better idea of what it is that we're doing in Manifesto and maybe you've been thinking about joining, signing up, checking it out. Uh, and this could probably give you a better idea of what it is that we're up to. So here it is. I want to speak a bit about um, yeah, comparing therapy and men's work and mainly about the differences between them and, and what we can learn from that. Um, and a bit about my experience. Uh, so throughout my 20s, I um, had depression and anxiety and was diagnosed with that uh, and took quite a while to 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 work through through that and, and get to therapy and so on. I think I'm probably not uh, diagnosably depressed anymore, um, but I'm still continuing with therapy because of uh, its its uh, overall benefits. But I've had probably about four years of, of therapy of, of different types, including CBT, existential therapy, compassion-focused therapy, internal family systems, and at the moment, somatic experiencing. Um, so I've experienced a few different kind of ways of doing it. And I've tended to move away from the more cognitive therapies, talking therapies towards the more body-based and uh, meditative type therapies. Um, and yeah, it, it took quite a long time to work out what therapies would be valuable for me. Um, and uh, I think that's one of the problems with therapy. It, it's, a, it's a lot of, of, of challenging to, to match yourself um, to the right kind of therapy. Um, and then with men's work, uh, so I'm going to be talking about, yeah, comparison of therapy and men's work, but I'm largely talking about manifesto men's work because I don't have much experience of, of other types. Mm. Uh, so firstly, like, just why would we expect them to be related? How are they similar? Um, I think they're both about improving people's well-being um, and having structured interactions to improve people's well-being. Um, and also they're both very relational. And they they act through the relationships that you have, um, unlike something like meditation. Um, and then going into to points of difference, so I think a major one is something I'd call like the degree of symmetry or asymmetry. Um, so therapy is kind of an asymmetrical relationship. Um, you've got a uh, an expert paid um, a therapist who never talks about their own problems um uh, and they're kind of in a in a healing role for the client um who who is is working on their problems focused on themselves um and so there's kind of an exchange there and also there's like a, a load of kind of legal and professional codes and responsibilities around the therapeutic relationship which makes it a very kind of unusual kind of relationship mm -hmm. and i think that there's a big value in this asymmetry essentially you can place yourself in the care of the therapist um in quite a significant way uh and you know that you can bring your most most difficult things and they can handle that um and you don't need to do anything else other than pay for them and respect some basic boundaries um and so like i feel like I, there are things that i will go into with my therapist that i wouldn't go into in a men's group um because uh it's it i wouldn't expect the men in the group to have the skill and the kind of neutral position to be able to to handle um certain things um and similarly like therapists are well placed to handle things like transference so transference being something like you know you might you might be reacting to your therapist as if they're your father or, or, or some other person you've experienced and i think like that's a challenging thing to handle but um to receive that but therapists are very kind of trained to work through that with you and so you can kind of be very open in that way um you can do that to some extent within men's work, but, but I think given the symmetry of the relationship, it's it's it, it's somewhat more limited. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, in men's work, it's much more symmetrical. You're 
uh, you're hearing about others' lives, others' issues. Um, there's no one who's like an expert. There might be facilitators and there might be people who are wiser, but it's not quite so uh, such a formal kind of difference. I think a value of this compared to therapy is that it's uh, men's work is much closer to everyday life. It's like real, real friendships, real relationships, not so artificial. And it provides a container that's slightly artificial such that you can work with things in an unusual way, but close enough to to, to everyday life that, that you can kind of get to certain things that you wouldn't do um, in therapy. And another huge advantage is you you hear about the experiences of other men, see them work through their issues, and they can give you advice and uh, you're kind of more alongside each other. So that's uh, symmetry. Um, another big difference is the degree of directiveness. Um, so in a lot of forms of therapy, there's an ideal of being non-directive. This isn't all forms, but but a lot of forms of therapy have this kind of non-directiveness. And the idea is that the person themselves, the client themselves, is um, there's a process which by which they heal themselves. Um, and uh, that it can be counterproductive for the therapist to give advice or to 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 kind of hold certain things as an ideal. Um, and a, an interesting side effect of this that's caught me out before is that therapists won't hold you accountable. Um, so I've tried this, uh, tried asking therapists, oh, can you check in with me if I've done certain habits or whatever? Uh, I tried this with three therapists. Two of them, they just repeatedly forgot and I gave up. The third one, because I'd seen this pattern before, I asked them why. I asked him why he, he wasn't up for doing it. And he said that it's important for him to not favor one part of me over another part of me. Um, so uh, he, he doesn't want to side with the part that wants to do the habit because he also needs to work with the other parts and those parts need to feel accepted. And I think that's a good reason, basically. Um, you have, The therapist has to be in a position of accepting all of you. Um, and so holding you accountable doesn't really fit with that. Um, and so then I think, you know, that that's an advantage of men's work, men's work is you can have that accountability when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, similarly therapists don't have like a set of ideals that they want you to meet. Um, they're not going to, going to suggest any particular religion or philosophy or a uh, set of principles. Um, they're more wanting you to flourish in, in ways that you define. And that's part of like what creates the accepting environment. If they were to put in a set of ideals, it would it could kind of break the that feeling of emotional safety in, in the therapeutic relationship. Um, so manifesto and men's work has an aspect of non-directiveness, like it's fairly open. You can follow different religions and have your own goals and so on. But there is a directiveness um, in that there are explicit values and principles and there's accountability built in. And also just having the ideal of masculinity in itself is a kind of directiveness. Um, and that brings me on to gender. So uh, therapy is mostly gender neutral. Um, its techniques are meant to work on men and women. And it seems like research it does, mostly doesn't divide up men and women. It's just in, in populations, mixed gender populations. Um, and in my experience of therapy, gender hasn't come up that much, except I do bring it up sometimes. Um, and uh, my current therapist unpromptedly brought up um, uh, King Warrior Magician Lover archetypes, which I was surprised at. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's largely um, largely not much talk about um, uh, masculinity and so on. So it's relatively neutral. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, obviously in men's work is very much the opposite. And there's a lot of thinking in men's work. What does it mean to be a man? What is masculinity? Um, and the idea of men and women needing different things. And actually this gender kind of neutrality, the, the British Psychological Association has a, a, a kind of research section on, on men, male psychology. Um, and they put out some guidance on, on how can therapy be more fitted to men's needs. And they point out that this neutrality, gender neutrality is a bit of a problem because then you don't necessarily know how to customize therapy for, for men versus women and, and that the current therapeutic models might be a bit too, um, might be mainly uh, kind of appropriate for women and not so much for men, uh, particularly just the mode of sitting face-to-face -face talking uh, for a lot of men. They want something more action-based 
um, and more practical. And, and so I think there are some therapists who are thinking about this. But then on the other side, the very existence of that research section in that, that association was controversial when it was set up. Um, people said, oh, we don't need a section on male psychology. Um, so that there's, there's definitely like a, uh, and, and I think the American Psychological Association put out some guidelines that were very kind of anti-masculinity a few years ago. They've adjusted them since um, to be less, uh, less, less like that. But, but there does seem like a, a debate in, in therapy about, uh, about masculinity and about gender, um, which, uh, yeah, with, with these, these kind of, uh, different views. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so then another another difference I think is the degree of, of kind of technique and technical expertise in both both worlds. Um, so therapy involves very deep training uh, and some quite complicated techniques and complicated capabilities of the therapist. Therapists have to, you know, train their own capability to to be able to do therapy well, and that that takes a long time. Um, and there's also a lot of kind of deep research around therapy. I think men's work tends to be a bit more common sense um so there are a lot of what we do is quite basic it's like things like coming up with a plan setting goals establishing habits and so on um and uh yeah i think at least some of the facilitation is, is probably a lot easier than, than being a therapist um i think there is some stuff in men's work that's more kind of theory based and more complex like uh a lot of the thinking about masculinity, definitely. Um, and also there's this aspect of ritual, um, which is, is interesting in, in men's work. And, and that in itself be a, be a whole kind of complex technique. Um, yeah. And finally, on that point about ritual, on the surface, men's work has more ritual, more explicit ritual, trying to be more ritualistic. Although when I was thinking about therapy, it is quite a kind of ritual space. Mm -hmm. um, it is very it's it's unusual it's just it's, it's very kind of um it's got a certain set of of boundaries and norms and it's very other than normal normal life um and uh i've experienced some kind of unusual states of consciousness in in um in therapy and i think it can produce that um so it, it's like a kind of ritual container for some quite intense things uh, um uh so then those are kind of just to sum up those differences i mentioned that's the level of symmetry um how directive uh they are and um, the degree to which gender is, is paid attention to the degree to which like um complex techniques are involved and then ritual uh and then like i said at the beginning the points of similarity i think uh yeah both are really relational um and use structured interactions and relationships as a tool for growth um, they sort of offer like a sand pit or a safe space to challenge yourself um, and to grow and how do they fit together so for me um the fit between them like they're very complementary and i would they're very complementary and i wouldn't want to drop one or the other mm -hmm. um, so i find that men's work is good for getting my life together in a practical way um you know building habits goals uh, and so on, and also for being with men and learning from men, seeing their lives, um, uh, and having a, a kind of a role to play, helping others as well as as well as being helped. Um, whereas therapy is kind of more for the 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 less practical, more sort of inner kind of work, and then these kind of reciprocal. So the the more my life is together, the, the easier it will be to do therapy, and the as I resolve things in therapy, that that helps me with my kind of uh, uh, practical life. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, I just want to mention what I think might be an unexplored area, uh, which is pair work. Um, so therapy is 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 pair is paired, obviously, but it's this kind of expert client pair. Mm -hmm. um, but there's various coaching modalities that are quite simple, almost like procedural processes where you just ask a series of questions of another person um, and they can be quite powerful things like Gendlin focusing and core transformation co-counseling and, and there are lots of others um, and it would be interesting to try and kind of set up 
pairs to be able to do that kind of work. I don't know whether that would fit in with manifesto or whether it, it's somewhere else, but it's sort of somewhere in between uh, therapy and and um, mm -hmm. and more kind of group work. Um, and I think an advantage of pair work is it's is it's well a big advantage is it's cheaper. You're not paying a therapist every time, um, so you can get more volume. Like you could do more of it, um, or you could do it at a lower cost. Um, and I don't really see spaces in society for doing that. Um, you'd, you'd have, there are kind of group workshops and stuff, but not like where you'd kind of meet each week to, to run through these kinds of, of processes with another person. Mm. And we have that some things a little bit like this in, in manifesto, like the integrity process is a very simple example of it. Um, but they could, and, and some of the other exercises that I've heard you guys talk about, um, but there could be more thinking about this systematically. Can we like, kind of bring in lots of different kind of procedural coaching methods and then try them out in quite a systematic way and and work out what's what's most powerful mm -hmm. uh and yeah that's it i'd be interested to hear everyone's uh, thoughts and questions